Hey, good morning everyone. Welcome to Memphis. Welcome to my garage. I wanted to share a little bit with you. Um, today I'm going to be putting down some growth regulator and some urea. And um, I didn't show you the first time I did it. <clears throat> I wanted to get the system down and um, make sure everything went smoothly and it did. Um, at the, f the first time I put down the minimum rate and uh, everything went well and uh, this is the second application I feel more comfortable about it um, with the success and so I thought I'd lay everything out and show you the process that I go through so I've got a table here of stuff that I use um, to do this and uh, it works well for me hopefully you can find some useful bits and pieces in it okay here we are at the table of things. Um, first thing, first business is the a new growth regulator. Um, so why did I pick a new? A lot of people use TNX. Um, I just have a kind of a bias. I, I like handling solids and weighing solids. Um, and I think that if I need to keep this a long time and I don't go through it very fast, I can certainly repackage the solid and vacuum seal it and freeze it. Um, those are common methods to, um, you know, preserve materials, and so it's it's easy for that. Um, the dosage is 0.18 ounce, and that's a weight ounce to 0.37 weight ounces um, on hybrid Bermuda. <clears throat> and the first time I did 0.18, and that was about five grams uh, per thousand square feet and I'm going to go up a little bit just because I think the grass is used to it now to um, seven grams which is about 0.24 somewhere in there I'll show you all the calculations uh, that I used later uh, the second component is going to be just cheap 4600 pellet uh, urea and what I do is I weigh that out <clears throat> and dissolve it and then I um, I filter it oh that's one thing I don't have here let me grab those this is uh, this is what I use to uh, filter any uh, any mixes that I make so it's a fine mesh paper cone uh, strainer and um, other materials I use uh, I usually premix I'll premix in a bottle um, so I'll, I'll uh, let me go back so <clears throat> the rate on the urea is about 100 grams per thousand square feet that's just a touch over 0.1 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet so just a little bit not too much Um, and what I'll do is I'll weigh all of that. I'm going to make about five gallons, and I'll put that um, all that 500 grams of urea into this container and dissolve it, pre-dissolve it, then filter it as it goes into the tank. Another important component is some kind of surfactant or spreader sticker to help um, help facilitate the transfer of the um, growth regulator and the urea into the plant and you just use a you know very small amount of that maybe a teaspoon you know maybe five milliliters uh, per gallon and um, <clears throat> and then um, oh yeah so th because of that surfactant um, I found that in my sprayer um, I get a bunch of bubbles and then it makes it hard to pick up the last amount of material and so I picked up some defoamer um, and this is available in numerous places I just happen to get it locally here at Tractor Supply and so that'll take all the foam and bubbles out that'll be new I didn't use it last time and um, and that kind of caused me some headaches so I'm looking forward to that um, down here in the center just some homemade um, containers to do some weighing in um, in the chemistry space, we'd call that a weigh boat. Um, so some homemade weigh boats 
Um, of course you need a scale to weigh everything out. Uh, I like to use grams. It's more sensitive. Um, and then uh, lastly, I, you know, I've only sprayed a handful of times, so I'm not super comfortable about that. So I use a marker die. Um, no shame in, in doing that because I don't want uh, heavy regulated stripes and non-regulated stripes in my lawn. I want to get a nice even application. And then lastly, of course, uh, a bucket to mix all of this stuff in. And for safety, um, uh, gloves. And then I pour it into my backpack um, sprayer. I'm using the Flowzone Typhoon 2.5. Um, found it really nice to use. I, I made up two, two tips for that. Um, I've got a, a XR110 red and a AXIR, so air injection tip for bigger droplets. And I fab those up um, for my sprayer. And the first time, one of the downsides <laughs> with my sprayer was I didn't know what pressure you know, to use. So I picked the middle, setting three out of five. And, um, and, uh, and what happened was the pressure was too high and it was causing a bunch of like super micro, micro droplets. And what ended up happening was I ended up wearing um, a lot of the material. You know, good thing I had double layer clothes on and things like that. But my pants were blue, my shoes were blue, um, uh, not exactly what you want. <clears throat> so um, I tweaked that down, I turned the pressure down to uh, setting one, and the spray is uh, much more controlled. And um, I think, and I did some practice sprays with water um, with a little change in technique. Um, I'm changing it off to the uh, side instead of in front of me so I'm not walking into the drift I'm putting it off to the side of course it's all met you know it all depends on which way the wind is blowing but today we've got a, uh, a you know there's no wind which is which is great so um, I'm gonna start mixing this stuff up and take you with me through the process and then uh, then we'll do some spraying so let's get to it all right so we've got the camera set up and uh, hopefully um, hopefully we don't overheat, but uh, the first step I'm going to do is weigh out the urea. And so, I'll turn my scale on, and what I'm, I'm going to need 500 grams, and I'm going to make 5 gallons, so 100 grams per gallon of urea. Dilute it up to... Um, Five gallons. So just opening up the bag, and you can see it's just uh, regular urea. It does have some particulates in it that uh, are not. Urea, so that's why after I dissolve it in water, I filter it. All right, so we're at 630. And we're shooting for 500. We're at 400. A little bit of back and forth here. Four eighty, four ninety, five hundred. All right. Okay. And so what I want to do is I want to transfer this to my container. Just gonna take the label off so I can see better. And I think I'm going to transfer it into this so it's easier to pour in there without spilling. And 
just want to transfer this to con the container here. Urea is very soluble in water, so we don't have to walk, worry about that. This uh, 500 grams will easily dissolve into into uh, one gallon or half a gallon, three quarters of a gallon. So the other nice thing about solids is if you spill them, you can sweep them up and reuse them. I got a chunk in here. I'm just going to break that up. to um, add some water to this and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've been able to, uh, let me adjust the zoom on this, it might be a little too zoomed in here. Um, I got this filled about three quarters of the way full and um, it feels nice and cold so Dissolving urea into water is an endothermic process, so it absorbs heat, so it feels cold, versus exothermic, it releases heat and it would feel hot. It's almost all, all dissolved. Some of that is air bubbles, and some of that is just it's a very concentrated solution of urea. Yeah, this looks good. You can see there's some particulates and some debris in the bottom. Some of that is just my, <clears throat> you know, the bag from using it. But nonetheless, you want to get that, get that out. And that's what these guys are for. So these are a pretty fine mesh uh, paint strainer. And they're a good mix, a good mix of getting good flow, but getting good filtration. Because the last thing you want to do is plug up your sprayer halfway through your job or something like that. That would be a nightmare. So, so we'll set that aside for later. Alright, so we've got the urea all dissolved. Alright. So the next step is I'm going to add some initial water to um, the sprayer. And just so we have a pad of water to mix this stuff into, and then we'll, we'll transfer the um, concentrated urea solution uh, into that. Okay, all right, check back with you in a little bit. All right, so we have the sprayer 
and a bucket of water. And I'm just going to fill this up, maybe halfway. Clean the whip off, make sure there's no debris in it. And we're just under three gallons, so that's fine. Got the strainer in here, we'll keep that in there. We've got our uh, fine mesh, and we've got our urea, so we'll just add the urea in. And you can tell it's nice, nice and clear. It's got condensation on it because it's cold, and we'll just pour this in. I'm just pouring gentle towards the end so I don't wash all those, wash all that debris into the, I mean the filter's there, but we can keep it in the container even better. There we go. All right. Then let me show you what we caught. So you can see, let me just make sure this is on camera. You can see that there's uh, bits and pieces of stuff in there. So the filter's doing its job. All right, next step is to mix up the anew. Okay, so like I said, uh, the growth regulator is super potent and we only need seven grams. Um, We need seven grams per thousand square feet. And um, I said I was going to make five gallons, but I think I'm just going to full, fill this sprayer full, which is probably about four and a half gallons. And so what we need is seven times 4.5. So that's um, seven times four would be 28 milligrams plus another three and a half. So that's like 31 and a half milligrams. So just, uh, I'm just using a smaller container here because it has a less, less tear weight, so less variance on the um, scale and we're going to mix it up to, uh, what did I say, 7 times 4, 28, I'm just being real methodical, real slow about that. And that's that. Seal that back up. And let me show you what this looks like. So they're really small, little extruded, little extruded pellets. Okay.
we're actually going to do the same thing. We're going to put it in this container that we use for the urea and then dilute it up with water and, and dissolve it, pre-dissolve it, and then add it to the sprayer. Grab some water, be right back. Okay, now we're back. And you can see this material behaves uh, different than the urea. Uh, it's almost more of a suspension. So if you look really carefully at this concentration you know, anyway, it seems to be a really fine, ultra fine suspension. Same routine, we're just going to add this through the filter uh, into the backpack sprayer. Just let me move you over a little bit so you can see that. Got the filter at the top, and we're just going to add this to the sprayer. And there's no material really being collected at the filter, so you know it's super fine, it's finer than the filter. Okay, there we go, got that done. And then the next steps, um, I think I'm going to break the drill out and mix everything together in the sprayer and then we're going to add the uh, sticker the defomer and the marking die and then we'll be done we'll be ready to spray all right so i fitted this uh, paint stirrer on my drill and um, just take it easy with this move at a slow pace otherwise you're going to end up wearing it everywhere And you just want to do this for a little while, get everything mixed up. Okay, the next step is the sticker, and it says on the container 2 to 8 ounces per 100 gallons, and if you divide that out, um, that is about 3 milliliters per gallon. We've got a syringe here, just a regular old syringe from Tractor Supply, and we're going to shoot shoot for about 12, 12 milliliters. So 5, 10, 15, 20. So we'll try and get around 15. Thirteen. Okay. 
Okay. And then we can just add that to the tank. Push that in with the plunger. Okay, and mix that around. Let's see. Not sure if you can see on the camera here. There we go. <clears throat> ounces per hundred gallons so that's only about maybe five yeah that's only about maybe five milliliters or so so we'll put that in there and what this is going to do is it's just going to prevent um, bubbles forming because as you walk, you know, it, it gets agitated and starts making foam. So we'll put five mils in of that. And that'll keep the bubbles down. Okay, mix that around. compromised from all the dye um, but let me do a, a quick look and um, then we uh all right we're back with some gloves and I think instead of using the syringe I'm going to use this guy here and there's a there's a mark for 25 mils so I'm just going to go just under that um, and then this will be easier to rinse out with water and, and stuff so um, let's do that. So. Okay. That's about twenty mil. Wipe that off. Okay get some water here we get some water all right so we're just going to pour this tractor dye in and then and then rinse the container out repetitively until we can get all that dye out because that's the thing is it seems to last forever Let me tell you, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So, I just uh, poured it in there, got a little bloop, and you can see 
You got blue dye here, blue dye here, blue dye here, blue dye here. It just goes everywhere, right? So be real careful with that. It's going to end up everywhere. That's one downside of it. But I feel much more comfortable with that than than if I um, that if I don't use a dye at this point. And what if I miss a spot? And then my yard looks all funky. So. Wipe that up. Try and get all the dye in the water. It's pretty good. And we'll just stick a paper towel in there. Okay, and then we're going to mix this around very, very gently. I'm going to change my gloves so I don't end up with dye everywhere. So that's that's the process that I use. Um, I'm going to repeat it. This is this is enough to do the front and side yards, and then I've got to um, repeat that um, for uh, the backyard. So um, other than that, I think I'll just um, I got to get dressed. I've got some uh, boots on. I got to get some boots on and some long pants, long sleeves, uh, a new pair of gloves. And, uh, and then I'll just show you uh, an example of, of uh, spraying, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, thanks. Okay, so we're back, and uh, I've changed. So, long sleeves, long pants, boots, and I've got a pair of gloves right there. And uh, basically the idea is to dress in something that you don't care if you uh, ruin it. Because um, there's a good chance you're going to get something on yourself. So, um, you know, leave the boots outside, don't bring it inside the house. You know, basic hygiene measures. Uh, wash these clothes separate from your family's clothes or your other clothes. Um, you know, that's the basics. Um, one of the downsides is, you know, these sprayers get heavy when they're full. So um, one thing I like to do is I'll put it up on a table or something, uh, like my patio table, and then I'll squat under it and uh, so I don't have to sling it around. So we're going to get loaded up. Um, i got to put the battery in the, in the sprayer, and then we're going to set it to a, a setting one. Now just to let you know, um, I've already calibrated my walk. Um, I, what I did was I filled it up to uh, almost full and then with just water and then I walked you know a reasonable pace walking pace when I had it on setting three I really had to move it I was really booking so that was uh, not ideal and then I was walking into the drift so but with setting one it's nice and controlled I can take an easy stride and um, and the timing came out perfect so that's something I recommend that you do to figure out, you know, how the product goes down for you so you don't over or under apply. Um, certainly in PGR case, over application is more dangerous than under application. Um, the urea is not too big of a concern because it's such a low rate. Um, but um, in my experience anyway, on Tifway Bermuda. So, uh, so yeah, let's get loaded up and then I'll just show you a small example uh, kind of close up of kind of spraying um, and then we'll go from there all right so we're all loaded up and we'll start spraying
All right, so that's the idea. Just back and forth. Hey everyone, just got done with the front and the sides. Um, I forgot to tape it. Um, I'll tape the back. I've got to mix up another batch. Um, one thing I learned from this um, recipe was, I mean, it was perfect. It ended perfectly, um, and um, I'm happy with that. The, um, the thing I learned, though, is I think I need to go probably higher on the dye. I mean, I could see the blue coming out of the tip, and I can see the dark blue green on the grass now but when I was spraying it it was just really really faint and I really had to concentrate on um, keeping my line straight and seeing where I had sprayed before um, I think um, since I'm going to the back I can up that rate um, I might double it up to the um, five ounces um, I'm sorry, well, it was two to five ounces per hundred gallons. Um, anyway, I did about 20 milliliters, so I think I might double that to 40. Um, and then I'll clearly be able to see where that blue is. Um, unfortunately, the downside of that is that the blue ends up everywhere. Uh, but um, luckily, if I just fill my tanks to the brim, I don't have to be refilling them more than twice, and so I don't make a lot of mess with the blue dye. So, um, yep, I'm just going to mix it up, and then I uh, promise that I'll put the tripod down and show you um, my spray routine in, in the backyard, which is the same as the front yard. So, all right, check in with you in a little bit. I've got to weigh some urea and some manu and mixy-mixy and this and that. You know how it goes. All right, see you soon. All right should have enough dye in here so you guys can see where I'm spraying and where I'm where I haven't sprayed so um, let's just go for it and show you what I'm how I'm spraying let's see I'm tilt you down just a little bit here there we go all right let's go
So that's it. Got everything sprayed. Looks good. Got just a touch left. Almost out, so perfect timing. Hope you enjoy this. Hope you found some useful nuggets, and I'll talk to you in the next video. See ya.